Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, or whatever it's a time frame when you watch this video. This is uh, lab number four in Chem 1500. Welcome. Today we profile separations. Why separations? It turns out that when we do our chemistry stuff, it usually ends up being a mix for reactions or whatever it is. And so there is always a need for some separation. We're not performing chemical reactions here, so the separation must be physical in nature as opposed to chemical, so that we maintain uh, the identity of whatever it is that we're dealing with. So we'll profile just uh, a, uh, a few simple things today. What I've hit, I have here is sand. Yes, good old sand. Kind of fine particles of sand. And I have here I2, iodine, iodine solid, I2, that's the formula. And it turns out that iodine is one of the few substances that sublimes. Sublimation is a direct conversion from solid to the gas without going into the liquid phase, iodine. So the separation here is going to be one where we kind of drive out by sublimation the I2, leaving just the sand, and then uh, we'll try and collect the I2 uh, uh, at the plate with ICN. So we'll be able to actually see sublimation and the opposite of that, which is deposition, when you get uh, uh, the I2 solid uh, coming from the gas phase into the solid. All right, so now on to the balance. On to the balance to make a mass measurement because we're not be able to find the various uh, amounts. We're not be able to find the percent iodine in our sample. So here is the little beaker. Put it on there. We're gonna tear the balance. And of course, it's gonna to go to zero, zero, zero grams. And then we wanna add here, it doesn't matter the amount since we're doing percentage here, but uh, just over one gram. Way too much. But it actually doesn't matter because we're doing a, uh, a percent. So again here, how many grams? 2.278 grams. I meant to put in one gram. But anyway, I could take it out, but since it doesn't matter, uh, leave it like that. Right. So now we are going to go to a heating station because we can encourage this sublimation to occur very quickly by heating. So I'm going to put my... If I can raise this a little more. So what I have here is a heating station. You can all uh, already see the activity. Lights. There we go. You can already see what's going on. The I2 is subliming. You can see the gas. It's a nice purple. Is it purple? Yes. Nice purple color. And so we'll let that go. And then we'll observe at the bottom here, later on, whatever is collecting. We can already see some uh, I2 solid. How did the I2 get from within the sand? Well, it's sublimed. How did the I2 get caught behind that plate? Well, we're cooling, so we are then observing deposition. All right, I'll let this go for a while because what we really want is for this brown color to stop, meaning that we'll have driven out all the I2 solid that was mixed with the sand. All right. Let's go to the next operation while that is going ahead. Uh, 
comes. The next kind of separation that I'd like us to consider here is uh, separation that is called centrifugation. It's a separation based on spinning. Hmm. When you spin at some rapid rate, uh, then whatever solid uh, or dense particles tend to be pushed back to the bottom. So in this case, we have a mixture here. It's magnesium hydroxide. Um, there are some, some of the magnesium hydroxide is dissolved and some of it is particulate in matter. So really small particles there that you couldn't pick out, but it's all in there. So the procedure calls for Six milliliters of this stuff, the, the mixture, into one of the centrifuge tubes. Now we'll first need to go and weigh uh, the centrifuge tube. Two. Number two. So number two here. Come out. All washed with a uh, with a brush and clean. Let's go weigh that. And uh, see what the mass is. Back to the mass balance. You realize that the mass balance weighing is suddenly a big operation. Tear the balance. Good enough. That's the mass of the centrifuge tube, and that is with it empty. Now I'm going to add six milliliters. Let's shake this a little. So let's give it a shake. Close it. Yep, let's go. All right. Try and pull this out before much settling goes on. So that's set to one milliliter. Again, to the first uh, point, resistance point. Pull it up slowly. One. Two. Three. Must balance again and performing a weighing operation. Ah, perfect zeros there. I don't need to tear. Put that on. We can then record the mass of the centrifuge tube plus the mixture. We are now ready for the centrifugation. Now, the way this works is that there are four of these up here, and they've got to be balanced. So I've already put in about the same, uh, uh, the same uh, six milliliters in here, and we'll put in the six in here. So number two is where our stuff is. Let's put that in there. Number one and number three are empty. So at this point, we we'll turn on the centrifuge. Okay. 
when it's nice and balanced like that, it just spins. I don't know what the revolution rate is for this centrifuge, but this is a small one. The big ones that they use in hospitals to, uh, to do plasma and all kinds of separations. But anyway, this is a small one, it would do for all purposes. And so we'll run this for about five minutes. While this is going on, we're going to come back to our first separation. And this time, as you can see, we can verify that uh, uh, this is, we can tell all the I2 is gone uh, from uh, the sand. Oops, that's not good. And I can take the bottom here. You can see some deposit. And I can do better actually by taking some. I'll do this. I can pour this out and rub it on there. That that stuff is the original I2 in the mix. So we started with a known mass of the mixture. What we're going to do now is take it off. Don't spill. And let it cool a little. And then after that we're going to perform, perform a weighing operation. You can go weigh that first. Right, let's go and uh, weigh our Cooled beaker. That's the beaker with the original sand. Let's perform a weighing operation. I can tear for just sake of it. Put that on there and record that mass. So basically, we know the mass of the mixture. We know the mass after we've driven out the, all the I2. Therefore, we know how much uh, I2 we drove out and how much sand is remaining, allowing us to do a percent calculation in terms of how much I2 was in the original mixture. All right, now on to the centrifuge. Again, here we are. Now turn that off. Was let it slow down when it's on. Come on, you're taking too long. All right, so where was our sample? Sample num in number two. So now what's happened here is that all that white stuff is sitting at the bottom. Uh, the, the term is, that's the pellet. It's all that stuff sitting at the bottom. Can I do this language, chemistry language thing? The pellet. And then whatever is up here is a supernatant. Supernatant. All right, so now we are going to do um, a weight operation again. Back to the balance. That's reading zero, zero. We will record the mass of the beaker along. Then I'm going to pour in the super name. Of course, in this operation, I, I don't want to get out uh, the pellet that's sitting at the bottom. And I think I've gotten most of it out. 
So we can now record the mass of the supernatant. And then what we're going to do is come over here. And of course the goal here is to drive out all the water. And so we can determine what, if anything, is, is dissolved. So gotta be careful here so I don't get uh, bumping. That is stuff splashing out. And the way I'll control it is just in and out when and if that happens. You can see here we got a separation. You can't see any of the white stuff anymore. The white stuff has formed the pellet and it's still in the centrifuge too. One more operation, my friend. That's a beaker. There's some stuff in it that was left over after we drove all the water out. We now come to the balance for one last operation. Put it on there. Record the mass. With this, then, we can perform all the calculations that are profiled in the lab reading. Good day. See you in lab number five.